If migrants from the south make trouble for the US, Mexico has a matching problem. These migrants, mostly up from Central and South America, are here to catch a train, a freight train. And many don't know they are on their way to market themselves as human merchandise. We have people coming from Latin America, from South America, from Central America, especially Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, who are very near to our border. For many of those who arrive from the South, Mexico is the last stop. We have around three million, three million people in the fields of Mexico. People who are forced, that are from places like Central America, or they come from very poor parts of Mexico. Interpol currently estimates that 50,000 people are trafficked every day worldwide. Slavery's been abolished and doesn't exist, yeah, right, in, in everybody's dreams. Uh, it's just gone into different forms, different formats, and gone underground. David Arkless became passionately involved in the fight against trafficking after looking at his own company. When you put so many people to work around the world, and it's millions of people, have any of them been forced into work? And behind that, are they having to pay money to somebody that's forcing them to do something? I thought, first thing we better do is have a look at our own organization and, and get our act in order. It's taken us four and a half years to fully and rigorously go back to every supplier. It's hundreds of thousands of suppliers. And this is one of the ways that big corporations, the corporate world, can play a role in diminishing the, the tide of human trafficking across the world. For the very poor, Mexico City looks like a city of gold. More than half of the capital's 21 million people work in the informal economy. One lucrative part of Mexico's informal economy stays out of sight. Those who trade in women and girls. You have local traffickers, and they go and tell the mothers or the sisters or the fathers that the girls will have a better job in the city. They offer them a job as a model, and they bring them to Mexico City, and then what they do is they set them up in these brothels as sex slaves, of course. These women were freed recently after police raided hotels that were being run as brothels. Y pues este, esa noche me preguntó que si yo quería apoyarla trabajando. Y pues me dijo que sí de prostituta y yo le dije que sí. Pero este, pues yo pensaba que era broma, ¿no? Y, pero después ya me empezó a decir que, que sí, que sí lo amaba, que me preguntaba que si yo lo amaba y yo le decía que sí que pues si realmente yo estaba dispuesta a hacer todo por, por el amor que yo sentía hacia él. Que sí tienen que hacer conciencia, ¿no? De que no estamos ahí porque queramos. Era una vida que me dijeron, te aguantas y te aguantas. Y yo, pues, no. How many people have you managed to convict of human trafficking in, in, in Mexico? <laughs> One. Mexico has recently passed new laws, but still, not all states outlaw trafficking. There is the states where there is no law at all. And I can tell you, I know that I am doing a very dangerous job because a lot of people are earning a lot of money. So when we start to do all this law, uh, well, there is people who doesn't like that we are going to stop their business. Nogales, one of a necklace of towns that hangs along the border. 
One town, two worlds, bisected by the wall. Creation of walls in the history of mankind has never worked. Guess what? Not one of them has been successful either at keeping a population in or stopping a population migrating somewhere else. Trying to build a wall between Mexico and the US where, frankly, two economies and two labour markets are so inexorably linked together now is a nonsense. It's a waste of tens of millions of dollars of money. It won't work and somebody needs to understand that. Here in Nogales, the American charity No More Deaths monitors deportees. They're home, but not safe. So we're standing right here at the border entry point into Mexico in Nogales, Arizona, and this is where the buses come and drop off about 80 migrants at a time. And many of them don't have any money, some of them don't have the proper clothing, and they just have to figure out what they're doing, and it's the most vulnerable time. For many of these migrants, it's about to get worse. This is coyote country. Gangsters posing as desert guides offer to smuggle exhausted, disheartened migrants back into the US for a fee. It's the world's cruelest recycling scheme. The person who came out of the immigration of the United States and the enganchadores are waiting for them. The enganchador, right? They take advantage of them, they come morally, they promise them that they will be treated well, they promise them that they will give them food, and that doesn't happen. El pollero se lo lleva. The missing line the walls of the charity's shelter. Pasar el camino, pues, sufrimos mucho en el desierto por el frío, el hambre, sed, y los los maltratos de la del pollero que nos llevaba, palabras groseras. En esa a veces lo secuestran a uno y a todos nos quitan todo. A veces hasta si los zapatos están buenos, hasta eso nos quitan. Van por un precio de 1.500, 1.800 y allá les andan cobrando 6.000. We've been hearing about situations where individuals are paying one coyote who will actually sell them to someone else. And then when they get to the U.S., they're told that they owe a certain amount of money. If they can't pay it off or they can't call a family member to get the, them the money, then um, some of them will end up having to work it off. On the short drive from Nogales to Sasabe, a roadside shrine to Santa Muerte, Saint Death a cult compounded of Christianity and ancient beliefs. Prayed to by criminals and outlaws, it promises protection without judgment. This is a last chance town that feeds off the trade in humans. Here, gangsters patrol the streets, preying on displaced people. La gente primero la la pasa que va para la pasa la persona ya de allí la reparte el pollero creo que para. People are going to move, so the borders aren't going to stop them. If we could stop building walls and having stupid immigration policies, we could put the money into developing a multi-government international mechanism to protect workers when they move from one place to another. Las autoridades ahí, pues no, si entramos nos sacan para atrás. Y pues vamos a ver si nos regresamos más, más al rato. Y si no, pues vamos a ver dónde nos, nos vamos. For the migrants on this border, like so many others around the world, what looks like a way out is a way in to slavery. We need governments and the international community and the UN to do something about this once and for all. ¿De qué más tienen miedo? De... ¿Qué crees que le haya pasado? Pues yo temo su muerte. Que, que Dios quiera y me lo tenga vivo, no le hace. The numbers might double in the next 15 years. We're talking over a half a billion people trying to move and moving from one country to another to find decent work. Ay, Marcos, si los miran, 
por favor. Por favor, saluden, por favor y... Bueno, y que esto sirva para la otra gente que no se ande cruzando. Ya, para que... 